this man has brought out more votes than anyone in Republican history. In history, history of my history comes from Frederick Douglass, you know what I mean? And you know, the black Republican and, and teaching, teaching. But Donald Trump, they says, well, he's uh, you know, he's been he's been bankruptcy and he's been able to do this and do that to get their money. It's nothing wrong with that because he was playing the system. He wasn't running for president. He was running for businessman. And he played the man, he made the system. He showed you how ingenious he is. He made uh, he made uh, a bankruptcy like a, a, a art, you know what I mean? Bankruptcy 101, bankruptcy 202, and then you can graduate. <laughs> and get bankruptcy, you know what I mean? With the higher degree, the higher degree. So you don't get mad at him because he, he did that. Well, well, that's what he did. He was the magnificent manipulator of business. An ingenious man working for business. All right, so now you go back and you jump on him and say, well, he said he would uh, he would do he would do these things and he's not doing. He's a salesman. He's going out there working his business. Now they don't bet him like that. They bet politicians with politicians. But you can see what happened with the American people. No matter what you say or do, you know he has bought all the votes out because the people are tired. They reject the system. They reject the establishment, and they find someone that would call them out. Now, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. One of the most visionary presidents we've ever had. John Fitzgerald Kennedy understood the system in 1963 when he had the guards to come out and go into Alabama. But he knew it. So the system says, if you want to eliminate me, and I know you want to eliminate me, we'll eliminate you. And so they eliminated, you know. But John F. Kennedy gave us a strategy for nuclear age. The nucleus demands that this white woman, that would be all women now, have the vote to be a part of the assembly. You must recognize that all the male governments in history has all failed. None of them has ever succeeded. They get poor, they get a run. Because they leave out 50% of the population, you know, that is circumvented from being a part of the voice of the people and being a part of making this country run. I mean, this is it's really ridiculous what you would say this now. I just understand if you white supremacist and you want to slay but you're, what about your mother, your sister, your aunt, your grandmother? I mean, how can you treat them and say they don't count? Because you get 18, you can vote. You can do this, and they're put aside. So Abigail speaks to you, you know? Abigail, you know, she was talking to her. Lincoln, you know, you get all of these ones that say, don't forget the ladies. Now, this was for John Adams' wife, let me correct that. Abigail, John Adams. John Adams, she said, he's sitting in the Continental Congress. She said, all your ancestors, you know, have suffered that women don't count. He said, don't you forget the ladies. Now, when you make these new laws, which you got to make, and you're going to declare independence, you know, don't forget the ladies. He said, because we don't want to get an, an aggregation or uh, uh, fighting you, but we ain't gonna take this, you know. So, and he went in there to put out the complaint of his wife, all right? When the women wanted to get the right to vote, in 1916, when he had an argument back and forth, it was 38-38 or something, and it was denying the woman to get the vote. A young kid, a young man, 22 years old, is in the Tennessee Congress. You know, he had been listening to all the old guys saying, let that woman in, keep a woman down, she's so privileged, she can't make a right decision, she don't do that. You just kick her, her, put her on a pedestal, make her do this, that, and the other. So this guy was going against the woman too. But his mother called him up and she said, I think his name was Harry. Harry, don't forget to put the R in the ring for Miss Kent. And Miss Kent was fighting for women's rights. He changed his mind and he voted for women to be able to have suffrage. That vote turned for the women to get a right to vote in this country. You know? And so these are the things that would make things happen for our people here. But this is something I want everybody to know that when you're working for America, you're working for yourself. And we don't want to be able to deal with what we have in our hand right now, one of the most highest crime that ever happened in Dallas, but it happened because of racism. You have a black getting killed by a policeman in Louisiana, a black getting killed by a policeman, 
I mean, policeman in Minnesota, and, and hitch this guy here who's a, a veteran from Afghanistan, over there in the Middle East or wherever they was fighting. And he decides that he's going to take it in his point his hand to promote what the other people that are doing, promoting death rather than life. And so what you find is he comes in and shoots 17, or five other policemen, and, and he also shoots the wins seven other people. That's heinous, but you've got to understand seven people died, and they should not die in vain. We should make certain that we use this because you get more conversation now about it than anywhere else in the world. You're bringing America to the table, white and black alike, to sit down and we'll discuss and find out what we can do. And remember, racism starts at home. And don't be before you get to the school. You've got to be what you teach your kids because that's why women are so mightily important because they are they're the mother of humanity. You know, so I have to be able to continue to fight for their rights as well as fighting for your own, because if you don't get there right, you ain't gonna never get your own. And so I think that we need to come together, like discuss this thing hard on with truth and honesty, and deal with what we find with truth and honesty, and work together with truth and honesty to be able to resolve and make this country what it can be, the greatest nation in the world. And so we want America to be resounding and resonating around the world, uh, everywhere we go, as a leader, when they see the eagle, they see the stars and stripes made in every way. You know what I mean? So you can't find where it could happen anywhere else in this world of a nation that's conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men and women are created equal. And it gives us one land, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we take that type of thing, you will put Trump in there to lead this rejection that we have for the establishment, but you're really voting for yourself. So take out the vanity and take everything from where within, where you got it, holding it up, or he said this one should be flesh chested, this one ain't got no bottom, this one, all these things that he's in saying. <laughs> let's, be, let's, let's don't get caught up in that misguided emotionalism, but because he's the only one that is calling out this system. And let me say this before I close. You know, when they say that the uh, when you try to mess with this system, you got to look at the look at what you have that's that happened to us. From John F. Kennedy in a limousine, Robert Kennedy in a kitchen floor, a Martin Luther King in a Memphis balcony, Malcolm X in a ballroom. You know what I mean? So you got Meg Evers in his driveway. You know what I mean? So you're gonna have all these type of things that's going on that's happening. Think about your children and what you want your children to be. And, it, and see, since we've got this, awake, or this alarm clock that's been went up in these last two weeks, it's time for us now to look at it for what it really is. And people are people. And you're going to find that under the pigmentation of the skin, the contents of the heart and character is what truly makes this country what it is. Yes. And so let us join together with our understanding and together. Right. And fight for it. This is a special election. Vote for yourself. Exciting to be here. You having fun? Yeah. All right. Well, get ready. Take a deep breath.